Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray as we close out today's show. Uh, Ron, is it still not the fastest 90 minutes in the outdoor fast, radio? The you, fastest 90 minutes. I mean, you know, it's, it, is, <laughs> it seems like 10 minutes ago we were... Uh, in um, and we just walk in England. Yeah, Kent England, <laughs> and we're going to finish up in uh, Dale Hollow Lake here the again, Salina, Tennessee. Yeah, and of course they may not feel like fast ninety minutes to Shelby McCall because she has to listen to us <laughs> and everything like that. Hey, she I wanted to it. close out today's show uh, uh, as part of our Dale Hollow Lake uh, kind of look back as we were there a couple of weeks ago with the Tennessee Outdoor Riders the Conference, and I had a chance uh, always when I have a opportunity i like to drop by uh, one of the fish hatcheries and this is one of the best it's one of the most well known and and that is the dale hollow national fish hatchery there in salina tennessee and uh, just happened to uh, bump into the man who is the uh, he's the project leader there uh, i did not know that andy had finally retired um, after 4800 years and thomas reeves had uh, moved in as the project manager, and Thomas jumped right up, took care of me and my wife, had a chance to visit with some of the guys out working. Uh, Going to put a lot of this on my website, but we're happy to have with us on Outdoors with Larry Ray this morning, uh, Thomas Reeves, project leader at Dale Hollow National Fish Hatchery in Salina, Tennessee. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. I think the first thing we need to ask you, Thomas, is how in the world did you end up in Dale Hollow Lake? Uh, at the, um, the fish hatchery. Tell us, I was really captivated by your career, man. Uh, you you came to Del Holler from where? Uh, pretty search, circuitous. Uh, I, I started my uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife career up in Massachusetts. Okay. After working with Bureau of Reclamation. All right. Um, my last hatchery was at Lahontan National Fish Hatchery uh, right near South Lake Tahoe in Nevada. Did you all hear that? Oh, wow. Lake Tahoe is a beautiful from Lake area. Tahoe. Nevada beautiful there area. to Salina, Tennessee, and that's beautiful. Oh, it's a different mountains, view. It's yeah. a different beauty here, oh, but yeah. at the same time, uh, it is a, a remarkable place. So, uh, tell us about the hatchery because Thomas, I know the you've been how, how long you've been with the Fish and Wildlife Service now. Uh, well, I'm approaching fifteen. No, I just passed fifteen years. Fifteen of years. Okay, so talk about the the hatchery itself. I know. Uh, a lot of trout. You guys are in the trout making business, so to speak. So t- talk about the the hatchery itself, because if I'm not mistaken, this this thing's been over there over fifty years. Uh, it, I mean, if I looked at it right, 1965 was when it was established, and you got it. In 1966, it was had its uh, cer- opening ceremony. Um, they had presidents on station, the vice presidents on station. It was. Uh, a pretty big event. Uh, I wish we had more of those nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah. So talk about the hatchery itself and what it means to Clay County in, in Salina, Tennessee. Well, it's a federal hatchery. It's one of 70 hatcheries left. Oh, really? And where refuges are growing, uh, hatcheries are shrinking. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I, I didn't, I didn't know that. Some of them get converted over states. Some of them get mothballed. And... I've been a believer in hatcheries since, you know, uh, my first time out fishing for salmon up in Washington State. That's what you told mm-hmm. me. Yeah, yeah. You know, without the opportunity to have these fish stay alive, we would have lost a lot of them already. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've listened to Andy Curie, and those are some big shoes to try to fill. He was eloquent. He was he was in line to be the cold water director for the whole region. He was. Well, he was and, there. Uh, the only reason he didn't do it is because he found someone else that was just as passionate about the job as he was. Yes. And he wanted to retire. Yeah, he did. Well, he had his time in, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> he, spent, he, had his, yeah. he had his time, and he had a real love for that area up there. And, and you got to do that because I, I could tell, I mean, you got a staff of eight, and you got, mm-hmm. I don't know how many raceways you've got. And, and, and you guys, it, you love visitors. I mean, let the people want to see these things. Yeah, this, they, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, you, when you come in there and you see your crew working, and I think the day I was there, they had had a uh, the temperature at the at, at Dale Hollow dropped from fifty eight to fifty two or something. Uh, major cold front. Yeah, yeah, major front came through and things along that line. 
So how many, what are we talking about trout? Now, I mean, you start with the, the babies, of course, and you got your brood yep. stock. So talk about what you guys do at Dale Hollow Fish Hatch. Well, we've actually specialized. We don't maintain brood stock at the facility anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because we have 16,000 gallons per minute going through the facility. 16,000 gallons using, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We are, uh, we are focused on being the grow-out facility. Okay. Other facilities, you can, you can have... I raised uh, 1.4 million eggs on 250 gallons per minute of water. Wow. With, uh, <laughs> a, a complete brood stock. Oh, you did. So yeah. 250 gallons per minute compared to the 60,000 gallons per minute. Yes. It was a no brainer to specialize in yes. the grow mm-hmm. up stage. Yes. Yeah. We've talked about doing brood stock work, but it's it doesn't make sense to do that. For no, 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 no. So you take them from. Little oh, so hatch. we get them in as a- eggs just mm-hmm. after their eyes have developed. Okay. Inside the eggs, and then it takes about two weeks before they're turning into sack fry. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then a couple, few weeks after that, they're turning into uh, fry that you can barely start to feed. Okay. You can barely start to feed. And then usually uh, 12 to 18 months after that, same as most agricultural animals. Yes. Two growing seasons. 12 to 18 months after that, they'll reach... Uh, their peak first growth, which is usually around 8 to 10 inches. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, yeah. When do they go outside? Uh, outside, now most facilities do it at 3 inches because we have so many fish going through our facility. Yeah. We can do it as little as just under 2 inches. Can mm-hmm. you really? Uh, and, and, mm-hmm. and, and these these fish... Where do they end up? I mean, what's what's the what's the the goal? I mean, the object of of, of what you guys do? Well, you guys have worked a lot with TWRA. Yes, you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So while we're a, f- a federal facility, we're making up for the presence of the dam being there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of TR- TWRA is doing the same thing. The, the dams are there, so we have to have a way that people could still actually enjoy our waters. Yeah. If not yeah. for raising these trout, there wouldn't be fishing out in these rivers. That's right. And That's a lot right. of, I, I think, you know, when we have the TWRA now has the winter's trout stocking program, which is probably one of the best things they've ever done. And I'm assuming some of your fish uh, are involved in this uh, winter trout stocking program. Are they, Thomas? Yeah, it's it's an elegant balancing act. Uh, we have regular meetings where we decide which hatchery is going to be supplying fish, mm-hmm. supplying fish to which areas. Okay. And how yeah. many per hatchery? For yes. example, we just had a call a little while ago. We said we were light on fish, <laughs> and we lined out three different hatcheries that were going to be supplying fish instead of us. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. it'll be, we'll say this hatchery is supplying 45000 to this area. This hatchery is going to be supplying 10000 to this area. Uh-huh. So it's a little bit of a coordinated dance. Now, this is, doesn't change year to year. Yeah, that's okay. right. We have, we have an outline of what we're going to do year to year. Uh-huh. It's just a little yeah. bit of uh, slight balancing between the facilities each time. So when those trout are just like in their eye sack until they get to 8 to 10 inches long, you guys see that growth all the way up to where they're 8 to 10 inches long, right? Yep. Right there at that hatchery. And, folks, i got to tell you something. Uh, you can kind of look down on that hatchery and the road that you go to, and it's pretty amazing. That's a very big facility um, that you have. Um, and each one of the tanks and everything that you have there, are they different sizes? Do you keep them separate? There is... You run a fish hatchery with math. Mm-hmm. With math, so you yeah. Can actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can actually determine how much oxygen fish will use, and uh-huh. then you take that oxygen to say, all right, if they're going to use this much oxygen and I have this much weight of fish and they're going to grow this much in this period of time, yeah. how many fish can I keep in this rearing unit? Mm-hmm. So we'll have these little tiny troughs that are 20 feet long, uh-huh. two feet wide, mm-hmm. a foot and a half deep, mm-hmm. and we'll put 100,000 fish in there. 100,000. But okay. those same fish in three months' time, uh, well, actually, those same fish in six months' time, uh-huh. you'll only be able to fit 20,000 in a 100-foot <laughs> race way that's eight right. feet wide. Because they've already grown. I mean, they've grown that's like right. that. And you do have some big ones in there, though, Thomas. I mean, uh, swimming around. So we got our show fish, and as we, as we, you know, we, try to get the fish as big as we can in that period of time yeah mm-hmm. yeah we always keep yeah. some show fish too there's you get uh we have some albino trout that were donated to us they're not normal stocking fish they're yes. not yes. anything special genetics or anything like that but right. they're pretty to look at and and 
one of the uh, uh, facilities had breeding pairs of albino trout, and we said, wow. sure, we'd love to. Really? To, okay. That's something interesting that you're not going to yes. see in most places. And mm-hmm. these are these are yeah. show trout, I mean, uh, for the people to yeah. look at. So. Uh, the, some some of them I saw in there were huge though. I mean, I, I'm I'm talking about twenty inches or more, you know. Oh so. yeah, no, there's there's a there's probably a good eight ten pound rainbow trout in there. That's, uh, <laughs> That's blue, big. gorgeous. I, I, I saw keep it. looking at them going. Yeah, and and mm-hmm. and now we only got a couple of minutes, so tell our listeners quickly. They do have a friends of Dale Hollow Fish Hatchery, right, Thomas? That even people it, in it, Memphis could be. Yeah, people in yeah, Memphis. Yeah, and then this is the most important part of hatcheries for volunteers. Yes. Um, one of the big reasons why we still have the 70 hatcheries that are left are the friends groups. The friends mm-hmm. groups. The group. volunteers that give back. You know, some folks will want to come in and spawn fish. Some folks will want to come in and, and answer phones. Some folks will want to come in and have nothing to do with the hatchery, but they want to uh, hold Help an agriculture out. class yes. or a bow class on the facility. And if they're part of the friends group, then there are partners. They're the reasons why we exist. Uh, they help us. We have our current friends group right now is doing our entire trout in the classroom program where they take trout eggs oh, bring it wow. to a dozen different schools where they raise the, from eggs into and those are volunteers uh, sized fish that can be put out into rivers. And, and that's just the friends group doing it. So We're how do they involved in that? Normally that's a full fish biologist that has to do that. So so how do they get in touch with you guys and uh, find out more information and uh is there a, a, a website someplace they can go to uh, check in, in, in on Dale Hollow Fish Hatchery? There's there's two ways to do it. Uh, one, if you just Google for Dale Hollow National Fish Hatchery, it'll pop up with a website for there you. So go. You can email us at any time. Okay. The Friends of Dale Hollow also has their own Facebook page. Oh, okay. Great. Right. Right. I don't maintain that, uh, and I think the gentleman that has built that Facebook page probably isn't too, too – he's brilliant, but he's not – into the messaging back and forth. Yeah, so probably yeah. your best bet is to actually call the hatchery or email us at the hatchery. And, folks, it's right out of Salina, right there in Clay County, Tennessee, a beautiful place. Uh, stop off and see Thomas Reeves. And One the, of the great and, places yeah, to and visit. And his crew. And, uh, and Thomas, we appreciate it. Glad to meet you uh, and hope everything goes good. Thanks for spending time with us on Outdoors with Larry Ray, buddy, and have a great day, okay? Hey, hey, thank you, Larry. I've been listening to your show uh, all morning, and uh, I'm going to keep listening to it. <laughs> all right, buddy. Thank, thank you. you. Talk to you later. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Thomas Reeves. Let me tell you quickly about next week's show. Got to get out of here. <laughs> the Gray Beard Adventure will be in the studio. That's right. Dale Sanders, his record for being the oldest person to ever hike the Appalachian Trail was broken recently, and Dale was there to welcome the guy who broke it. Johnny McFarland will be in the studio talking about the Mid-South chapter of Quail Forever Youth Hunt. Tom Benson is going to talk about the Tennessee Aquarium. And Ron Matt Kinzer, Major League Fishing Director of Events and Fundraising and a former St. Louis Cardinal Scout will, wow. will also be on next week's show. Ron Wong, thank you, buddy. It's been a great show, as always, and fun to go to England and visit <laughs> with uh, yeah. Dez. Yeah, Dez. Shelby McCall, thank you. As always, have a great trip next week, Shelby. Okay? All right. All right. You'll be in our prayers. Okay, girl? Thank you for all you do for outdoors and very much. She does a great job. All right. You make me No, oh, don't do that. No, no. All right. It doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport. What else, Ron? God, God bless, bless the USA. USA.